Yes, good evening to the all the participants, including the speakers, those I could see them. Now the only giant, the Azari Yahya from uh, the Indonesia and Pankaj Kumar Patak from the Nepal. I believe that you are hearing me. Yes, if anyone yes. wants to present it, we can start it now. And uh, those who wants to make it out, I will uh, give the introduction about him. Who will be ready now? Azari Yahya is ready or Pankaj Kumar Ratak is ready? Maybe Kumar first? There'll be a second. Okay. Now, Pankaj, you can take only the seven minutes for the deliberation. The, if no one question is there, then you can take the three minutes also. You can start now. Pankaj Kumar Patak, and he is from Nepal. Are you ready, Patak? Yes, sir, I am ready. You can continue your, so, you can continue your video. Okay, sir. Yeah, I will, I will continue my video. Please. Am I am I visible? Not yet. Not yet. It will come. It will come. No doubt. Okay. So am I visible? You start speaking and you yes. are visible. You start speaking. You are visible. Okay. Namaste. Namaste, everyone. Namaste. Yes, um, uh, the International World Thank Health you. Day. And um, my journey uh, started with Faculty of Education, with uh, administrative work, where we had many students from studying uh, health and physical education. So we have 36 years of experience in between uh, the administrative works, my educational qualification, I did bachelor's and master's and then implemented many things. Uh, we have a, a, a sports and a physical education committee also, which was founded. Uh, and then uh, the prime uh, focus was the world, uh, the, the, uh, the situations and the civil wars in Nepal was creating a lot of havoc and many students wanted to join army police, um, the local services and the international opportunities which were available. So we focused in uh, health and physical education and then I learned Reiki as well, which is um, uh, used in meditation where we um, um, treat individual one to one relation um, and then heal people uh, at physical level at mental level and spiritual level. So somewhere every individuals have this uh, set in their mind um, uh, 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 where um, uh, the healing has to be done. And our modern youth is um, very much engaged with disproportionate use of drugs. And because medical houses are everywhere, the media um, uh, discussed uh, openly created many movies. So we are here basically to create a lake where time to time ripples are created uh, uh, due to uh, somewhere mismanagement uh, due to which politically uh, all country are facing the problems and they are uh, focused uh, in controlling these problems. I would like to relate that workers with happiness induces uh, 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 induces uh, something related to increased profits. Okay, so we are here to increase profits by um, uh, uh, making them conjointly work in, in the industries the, and um, uh, serve various industries. Now we have a campus chief who was a faculty member uh, of health and physical education. So it's not that education faculty doesn't gives you anything and people are moving towards technical things. There are many old examples, people who uh, did an excellent service to education industry by um, uh, under faculty of education. So I would like to promote that. Yes, even today, if you cannot do technical study, they should um, uh, specialize with health and physical education where there is a lot of things to research. There are a lot of things to implement uh, in the youth circles so that um, uh, there is um, like um, control, youth can control their needs. People are, it doesn't matter what is served on the plates, whether it is a vegetarian food or a non-vegetarian food, all we have to take it in a balanced way. I want to share a small story in one minute, which is a story of a fawn which was told to me by my grandmother, um, uh, my grandmother's friend who was from Bardia. 
and Bardia is a jungle area and uh, musically people are very sound in culture and then uh, the problem is one fine day one man was uh, beating at the madal madal is an instrument uh, which is like dholak uh, and he was like um, creating music and singing a song and in while he was moving through the jungle a fawn came and started listening to that man uh, a lot the music which he was creating and he was listening and listening and listening and the fawn um, the the musical the person who was playing the music asked dear fawn uh, you came to me so near and you are listening to this music from many days every day i pass through uh, what is the reason you are coming? Then the fawn said, uh, all of it is a tale. So fawn said to that man that, sir, whenever you play this music, I feel so um, uh, spiritually sound and it uh, heals me whenever I come near you to listen to that music. And then uh, what is your attachment? And uh, yes, you do play the music very well, but it is not the music which is catching me, uh, magnetizing me towards you. It is the skin which you have used in your tabla or um, uh, the the model which is attracting me because it is of my father the skin which you have used is of my father that means people are using for meat and then for using the skin for musical instrument it is just a, a very compassionate story to tell children that yes we need to be compassionate with animals as well that means when speaking to nature it returns a lot it gives us control mental balance because every family is suffering with some problem every individual have 300 members at least with their siblings um, uncle auntie um, uh, mother's side paternal and maternal uh, relations me, but so that your five minutes are over okay sir uh, so i would like to uh, uh, through uh, like public ask any question yes uh, we are creating a lake pool where we, we are melting down the education from in uh, many countries so no more there is boundaries between us when sharing information uh, me representing nepal i am mba from symbiosis I, I, international one international conference uh, address martin please yes, mute sir. somebody is uh, satish gowda mute yes okay so uh, Anybody have any question regarding my whatever I have said uh, regarding the tale and as well as regarding the um, the healing process we use with the youth and promotion to health and physical education amongst youth? Uh, I would um, uh, like I would um, uh, like to, to uh, ask youth that join health and physical education and then you can um, uh, 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 have a great position in education industry as well um, because people are doing excelling. All are at great positions. Yes, uh, but I do have one question to you. You said uh, Swan is coming and uh, daily looking at him. What is the spelling of Swan? What do you said? Sean, S H A W E N. Sean. That is an imaginary friend. Okay, <laughs> there is okay. no person okay, like now. this. It is a story sir i am single i mean we don't have sisters uh, we are two brothers and sean was the story created in symbiosis yes thank you very much pankaj kumar Patak, for your uh, deliberation and you are running the school and where the physical education is a uh, part of it and yes a sound mind in sound body if the sound uh, body is not there there would not be any sound mind this is the yes. ancient proverb but we see the African proverb because I studied, no, I taught many times, many years in the Africa. The African proverb goes like this one. We say the Asian, a sound mind in the sound body, but the African proverb is a, a healthy mind in the healthy body. I repeat, a healthy, H-E-A-L-T-H-Y, -E -E a healthy mind is in the healthy body. Yes, with this that uh, I would like to invite the who is ready to, because as I say, Yahya, Azhar Yahya, from uh, first, uh, let me give the chance to the foreigners. Uh, and uh, Yahya, are you ready or you want to listen to somebody else? Okay, if you have somebody to try, okay, no problem. I see maybe uh, somebody else. I, I still am preparing my, my paper. Okay, maybe somebody, somebody else, else that you, anyone, yeah. Now, Olegunju, are you ready? 
You mute, you unmute it, unmute, unmute. Okay. Are you ready? Okay, I'm ready. Okay. Yeah, I'm ready. Come and he is uh, Professor uh, Badebo Olagunju from uh, State University of Lagos, Lagos State, uh, Nigeria. And he did the PhD from uh, the University of Ruko, and where I also guided him in Iringa. Yes, Karibusara, welcome. Olagunju is a dean now. Please uh, present your uh, presentation. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Sin. I'm delighted to be here. It's a, uh, well, I would let me say good, yeah, it's the day, good day from Nigeria. It's about uh, 4, 441, we're approaching evening. I want to speak, uh, look at this topic uh, from this perspective of uh, on today, that is a World Health Day. I want to look at the topic uh, of mental health, the issue of mental health in our society. It's a very prevalent uh, matter and uh, for every society. And in Nigeria, we are trying to cope also with this issue of recent, very recently, we lost uh, one prominent, uh, one of our prominent actors, Nollywood, in Nigeria. She was a person we enjoyed watching on the screen. Everybody, you know, she brings happiness to most homes. Unfortunately, we had, we just suddenly heard about her death. Before then, she lost her daughter. And we're all sympathetic. But unknown to us, while she was going through all this, and we're enjoying her on the screen, she was going through emotional problems, psychological problems. And so that made her to become sick, and she eventually died of these inner problems. There are others that the society uh, didn't see on screen that had committed suicide. I have another story, just one of the stories of a young man who you know, went to attempt examination, medical doctor, medical graduate, attempted examination uh, for UK uh, medical doctors to practice as a qualifying doctor in the United Kingdom and failed the examination once or twice. All he did was to drive on top of uh, one of our uh, high bridges and then parked the car people saw him and he jumped inside the lagoon the ocean and died and people were wondering how can the medical a young man of about 30 years or below just commit suicide so you have so many incidents of this in our society and i just feel on a day like this that uh, we are celebrating the world health day this kind of thing could be brought to land at light and we discuss in, in, in the interest of human, humanity. Incidentally, and truthfully, the World Health Organization has uh, the mental, uh, World Mental Health Day fixed for October 10th of every year. But then, because it's a general World Health Day, it's also an issue that goes on in every society. And it, uh, it, 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 it's a thing that if properly focused, because right now I know that uh, the World Health Organization uh, set uh, goals under the Comprehensive Mental Health Action Plan for between 2013 and 2030. But I know that under the Mental Health Atlas in 2020, analysis of country performance against the action plan showed insufficient advances against the targets of the agreed action plan. So to me, it is high time countries, Nigeria, India, Tanzania, Uganda, countries all over the world begin to focus on uh, how the issue of mental health could be addressed so as to reduce uh, suicide and death rates in our society. Also, it is pertinent to mention that some of the reasons that contribute to mental health in our society are, is poverty. A situation where you find, I'm sure it's not peculiar to uh, uh, to Nigeria or, 
uh, Afri uh, Africa uh, Southwest region. In the very early in the morning, as early as 6 a.m., 5 a.m., we are going to work. You are driving to work or you are in the train. You see young men drinking uh, all sorts of alcoholic mixtures as a result of frustration in the society. So mental health is also tied to poverty in our society. And it's high time countries begin to address all these issues so that we begin to have incidents of uh, lower, uh, it begins to go down. It's an emotional problem, it's psychological, but once addressed, I think the youth, both uh, young and old, and women, they then will be spared the agony of mental health. Thank you. Yes, uh, thank you very much, uh, Ola Gonzu, that you have nicely narrated with the pragmatism of the giving the stories of it, uh, how mental health uh, will play an important role also. And we will see that definition of the WHO also they have given, it is not merely the disease uh, which is there, but it also includes the mental health uh, also will be counted as uh, the health care uh, problems. Yes, now I believe that Satish is ready to make it out because uh, after Satish, yeah, yeah. then I will call upon the Azhari Yahya from uh, yes. the Indonesia. Later on, I will give the chance to the madam very waiting for it uh, if no one is there. Yes, now it is the Satish who is working in the State University, Government State University in the Bangalore. Is it Bangalore or Mysore? This is Bangalore University, sir. Bangalore University. Bangalore University. Now, I switch out to the uh, Satish. Please adhere to the time, seven minutes uh, for the deliberation. If any questions are there for the three minutes, please go ahead. Thank you so much, sir. Thanks for inviting me as a resource person in this uh, wonderful uh, international conference. First, I would like to express my heartfelt gratitude to Dr. Trishas, Sheikh Madam and uh, Mohammed Sir for uh, giving me an opportunity to speak something about uh, the right to health under Indian constitution, especially judicial perspective. How Indian judiciary has played a significant role to promote, preserve, promote the very important basic fundamental human right to health. So when it comes to the WHO slogan, you have you might have heard about AQ principles, affordability, then accessibility and accountability matters. So in Indian constitution, when it comes to discuss or uh, speak in Indian perspective, we don't have specific provision under Indian constitution to say about right to health. In fact, this was recognized by Indian judiciary by interpreting one of the important articles under Indian constitution, that is Article 21. Article 21 of the Indian constitution says right to life and personal liberty, according to which it, no person shall be deprived of his life and liberty except procedure established by law. Where Indian judiciary in series of cases, they interpreted this right to life such a way bringing right to health as a fundamental right. As of now, the status in Indian constitution, in India, we don't have express provision, but it is recognized as an implied fundamental human rights by series of, by Indian judiciary in series of cases. Number one, the famous case called Paramananda Katara versus Union of India. And second one in uh, Pashchim Bagh Majdu Sabha Samiti versus State of West Bengal. The question came before Supreme Court in this case is whether non-availability of medicine in the government hospital is a violation of right to life and personal liberty as interpreted in Article 21 of the Constitution. Where in Pashivmag Majlul Sabha Samiti as well as in Paramananda Katara versus Union of India, Supreme Court said right to, li right to health is an integral part of right to life and it is the duty of government hospital to provide medicine to the needy. Otherwise, non-availability of medicine in the government hospital is a glaring violation of right to health. It is not only a violation of Article 21, it is also a violation of international conventions. 
course, you might have heard about series of conventions. In fact, if you go through the UDHR, Universal Declaration of Human Rights, they recognize right to health as a, one of the important human rights. Further, UDHR has been divided into two important covenants. After six, uh, 18 years, they had an international covenant. One is called International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights. Another one is International Covenant on Economic, Social, Cultural Rights in 1966. Indian government, in fact, ratified these two important conventions in the year of 1979. As per the mandate, according to Article 253 of the Constitution, India has to enact law on particular uh, health issue. But, uh, we have not we don't have a comprehensive legislation to deal exclusively on health but we have a law called mental health act but my uh, concern here how judici indian judiciary has played a significant role bringing this right to health as a constitutional right though now in fact in 2015 they prepared a national health policy by the then indian government where they have recommended to incorporate this right to health as a fundamental right under the constitution. For example, in India, we were not having right to education as a fundamental right expressly. After two cases, in Muni Krishnan and uh, another one, uh, Mohini Jain cases, Supreme Court said right to life include right to education. Then afterwards, Indian government added 21A where they conferred right to education as a fundamental right. Similar way, Indian government in the national health policy, they recommended to bring this right to health as a fundamental right. And in one more case, Paramananda Katara versus Women of India, the, the issue came before Supreme Court of India that in case if something goes wrong, if, if a, a citizen met with an accident or some, something goes wrong, when we take them, when we take the injured into the hospital, the primary duty of the doctor is to administer the medicine to the patient. He, they need not to wait for any procedure laid down under criminal procedure code or whatever it may be. Sometime if murder takes place, if he is still alive or if injury takes place or something accident takes place. When we take the injured person to the hospital, generally doctor will ask first question is they, they, they wanted to do something in the presence of police. But Supreme Court in the case of Paramananda Katara versus Women of India, there they have given a landmark judgment where they said it is the duty of the state to provide the qualitative health care service to the individual. It's, it's, it is not only, the, not only to the citizen, even including non-citizen. And doctor need not to wait for the police. It is the, the primary duty of the doctor. Is Excuse me, sir, the please. Sir, try to wind up. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It is the duty of the doctor to administer the medicine to the patient. Thereby, they have to save the life of a patient. So, ultimately, the issue here, Indian government is also working uh, to establish uh, public, uh, uh, you know, undertaking hospitals. But my conclusion here, if it is run by both PPP model, pri public private uh, partnership model, then some extent they can try to implement the true spirit as mentioned under article 20 of, 21 of the indian constitution so and also they are planning to uh, add this right as a fundamental right under part 3 of the constitution thank you for patient uh, th thank you for your patience hearing in fact uh, within short time it's it's quite difficult to bring everything uh, somehow i have made it very clear and a brief presentation about the role of indian judiciary to ensure the right to health of an individual in Indian perspective. Thank you for your patience hearing, sir. Yes, Dr. Shatis Gowda M. You have made the two comments which have given the strong teeth to implement yes, and enforce. Otherwise, there is no enforcement of the those uh, international instruments are there. And the another point that you made it, uh, a police uh, report is not needed First and not foremost, needed. health is more important than the procedure. Yes, that is the Supreme Court yes, yes. case that you cited it. Now I will yes, uh, switch over to the, our uh, friend uh, who is uh, from the Indonesia, Azari Yahya. Azari Yahya, and yes. you say your degrees, what you did it? Because the degrees, I don't know. Your degrees. Say about your degree. Uh, then you start. Okay. 
Okay, thank you. Uh, can can I share my, my slide? Yeah, yes, yes. Now I will uh, switch over to the sites, your sites, yeah. Yeah, because I have to, I have to be ready with one first. Yes, but I am there. I already opened it. It is there on the screen. Uh, can, uh, can you share? Yeah, you say about your degrees first. Oh, my degree is my, my PhD in Monash, Monash University in Australia. What is SC? Something there. And doctorate degree SH. in Australia. SH. P, PhD. What is MC? Uh, MCL is Master of Comparative Law. MA is Master of Art. Okay, okay. Well, how do you pronounce the university? LLB. Sorry? How do you pronounce your university? Siah Kuala University. Okay, Siah Kuala University, Kuala. Indonesia. Yeah. Yes. Uh, uh, this uh, in, in, our company, your, your PPT first name? Azahari. No, no, no. PPT, PPT. PPT? The title. Uh, universal. Okay. Uh, universal coverage. Yes, yeah. yes. That's why I'm asking you whether it is a yeah. universal or not. Uh, then I can directly go to the PPT presentation and share. Yeah. Let me say share. Yeah. Now you can see your PPT. Yeah. Yes. Proceed. Not yet. Okay. Good. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Professor, for time given to me and respect to all the audience here, and especially for uh, Professor Dishad Sheikh. Uh, she was in Indonesia last two years ago. I met her, and I was going to India too to see her in India. Uh, thank you for coming. Okay, uh, this, my topic tonight is about universal health coverage, best practices in Indonesia. Okay, next, next slide. Okay. Yes. Okay, if you see uh, about uh, World Health Organization have defined the means of uh, we call universal health coverage, we call UHC, means that all people have access to the full range of quality of health services. They Bankaj, need. you are muting. Bankaj. Yeah, please continue. They need them without financial uh, so hardship. Means here that the state, the state have an obligation to provide full coverage of health for everybody in the state. Indonesia, for example, so Indonesian government has obligation to provide health services to all citizens. This is what we call uh, universal health coverage. This is the program made by UN. Next one. Yeah. Okay. And then here, uh, Every country has different uh, parts of achieving of uh, universal health coverage, which depend on the capacity of the state and depends on the financial provided by the state. Uh, for example, the for and for developing countries, of course, different with the developed countries. Developed countries has a lot of money; they can provide a lot of health facilities for citizens. But for developing countries, a little bit not very good at the moment because we have. Financial hardship. Okay, next one. Okay, next one. We're going to focus Indonesia. Next one. Yeah. Okay. This is Indonesia. What is I did at the moment? Yeah. So Indonesia uh, has one specific law, law number thirty-nine, year two thousand nine. So this law, talking about health. So this law was enacted by Indonesian government based on Article 25 of Universal Declaration of Human Rights, saying that the right to health is a human right. So, because Indonesia has ratified Universal Declaration of Human Rights, as a member of that uh, declaration, you now Indonesian government feels that has obligation to provide health facilities. Before that, the government of Indonesia had met one specific law about health. And now you see, we have more than 22 million participants in Indonesia, about 82% of national population, out of 26 million, million of national population. Now they have national health insurance scheme. And if you see the statistic, 
of course Indonesia is the biggest the fourth biggest country in the world and out of total population of Indonesia we get 82 percent of Nisidan has been covered by health services by government uh, can I show the statistics uh, your statistics is here uh, yeah uh, just, I think we, before just the, can you back, back again, back again, back before just the, before statistic, back again, okay, back again, again, one more, back again, okay, yeah, back again, yeah, so uh, because in Indonesia we get uh, two categories, yeah, we get uh, poor people and rich people, yeah. For non uh, non poor people, I mean rich people, the, the government does not provide health facilities because they have enough money to pay health insurance. Around thirty million million of people they pay health insurance by themselves, but the rest paid by the government. Uh, in practice, many people did not pay premium because of the because the first year of program. We didn't have enough money to pay the uh, premium for health insurance, but started in uh, with very low uh, budget. You get one point eight dollars per month for one person, and then you go up to uh, five point five two dollars for a month for one person out of the total population in Indonesia. Now, Indonesia government has spent a lot of money. To provide health facilities for all citizens of Indonesia. Now we get 23 hospitals. Uh, no, yeah. Go back. Can I go to the sections? No, you go back. Okay. Now we get uh, a lot of uh, hospitals in Indonesia. They use health coverage provided by the government. Yeah. And then in May 2020, the again increased the the premium for health, but at that time, because they had to be double, double payment for health insurance, and we did have enough money because of financial hardship. And then after one year later on, uh, the government of Indonesia had to provide a lot of money for health insurance. And now over 60% of the population of Indonesia live in Java, and 6% live outside Java. And then 7,000 people live in the small island, yeah? And Smyrna has no facilities. Very poor people at the, at the moment. And these poor of them, they, they have no facilities, health facilities. And then the coverage for health not covered by the government for them. This is the problem, you know, at Indonesia. Now, uh, what, okay, we get two slides, scheme here. One is, is, is yes and no. Yes mean health cover provided by the government. And then the second line, the health covers not provided by, by the government. Who are they? The first line, yes here, means any facilities needed by the government, by the people of Indonesia, the poor and the needy people, fully provided by the government. But the rich one is not provided by the government. They have to pay by themselves, or around 30 million. Okay, next one. Uh, see the statistic here? Okay, this is statistic. If you classify here, the, the poor and the, the richer, and the poorest here, and second poorest, middle, third, uh, here, you can see by yourself. And here, the statistic shows that the richer, richer person pay around 6.6% 6 .6 out of total health coverage paid by them and the rest still paid by the government so you can see the statistic and then next one okay the conclusion we got time is up okay what you can say that it can be concluded that for many poor people in indonesia all health needed still provided by the government because they are unable to pay by themselves because of limited uh, economic financial resources. And hospital, yeah, hospital, if you go to Indonesia, hospital, 
more common among the people who use, use facilities by, paid by the government, they use hospital, I mean government hospital. But the richer, the rich one, they use private unit hospital because they get more facilities. And the last but not least, I would like to suggest to the Indonesian government that so the government should cover whole health coverage for all people in Indonesia because this is the responsibility of the government to fulfill the right to health as human right. And then <clears throat> by providing facilities for health, and we hope that health problem will be covered by the government at all. Thank you very much. Yes, that you mentioned the Papua and you mentioned Java. These are the places. Yes, Java involves different places, and Papua is uh, close to Papua New Guinea, and Java is in Jakarta actually. Yes, if anyone wants to present it in five minutes, they can come. If not, we can make the another deliberations. Because still, the five minutes are left in the first session is concerned. And uh, I believe that uh, five minutes, can anyone can speak? Dilshad, madam, can you make an introduction? Mute and give the introduction of yourself, madam. Sure, Professor. So, Namaste, Assalamu Alaikum, and Good evening. Very happy to be part of this international conference on uh, this very, very great health day. Uh, that we all celebrated universally. And uh, the theme of this 2023 is Health for All. My presentation probably I may be continuing in the forthcoming session also since for only four or five minutes left for me. And I'll be claiming my seven minutes for sure. So now when we talk about uh, Health Day or the importance of Health Day, my presentation is very specific about Health Day and right to health as human right with reference to women and health universally. So when we talk about a right to health, we all know like there are plethora of legislations and number of conventions and treaties that have been entered universally or globally rather. But the point is like the human right to health that may be more than any other right that uncovers disparities in respect for the human dignity of uh, persons based on uh, like race or ethnicity or socioeconomic status, geographical location or the you know, gender or sexual orientation, age, of course, the mental health, disability and other characteristics. And good health is critical to a decent and dignified life. So it is a human right and it is basic to the enjoyment of all human rights and it is a precondition for the participation in social, political and of course the economic life. Traditionally, health was seen as falling within the private uh, since time immemorial, like it has been treated as a private kind of right rather than a public uh, realm and uh, the right to the enjoyment of the highest attainable standard of physical and mental health is not new and not so very needed in recent times. We all know like the today's complex international society that is characterized among other elements by the uh, universality and the diversity and of course the heterogeneous nature of its components. But it, it remains a society whose principal actors are the different states when we, we speak about states, we are speaking indirectly about the individuals or the citizens of the respective states. We all know like <clears throat> the right to health has gained conscious, uh, conscious mention internationally beginning in the second half of the 20th century when the international society has on the one hand become progressively more human and establishing uh, human dignity as an essential value rather with all that uh, entails in terms of human rights and the personal welfare of the individuals internationally. And on the other hand, international society has recognized international cooperation as one of its structured principles. And the international cooperation is always and therefore 
it is it is one such thing that is obligating the states not only obligating but also it is an imperative for yeah you are welcome back again to the second session and the madam is dealing dilshad madam shake dilshad madam is dealing it madam you can meditate in the three minutes you can start now dilshad madam I think she Present. she is not in uh, meeting, sir. Maybe. Yeah, Pankaj. Meanwhile, you can want to say anything. You can say. Yes, sir. I want to say something. I have noted down few things, which I need, uh, which I think it should be discussed in our today's meeting. One, the suicidal cases. Two. the ideas of producing services to the rich and we need to uh, enhance youth to think think of the services which we can create for rich people yes bank okay. so you say about the suicidal cases we will think about about okay now the madam has joined it and uh, madam you can continue it only 3 minutes are left for you because you have taken the good time yes read Madam, unmute and proceed. Dr. Dilshad Sheikh, you can proceed in the second session. Yes, 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 yes. So, uh, as I have been given another three minutes, let me be very, very direct about the gender equality that is necessary for uh, health as a human right. Uh, I, I, I would like to say that the attention to gender in all its manifestations and diversities is. it is fundamental to health as a human right and uh, however gender and other intersecting inequalities definitely prevail and sex and gender diversity for example are held ransom to the notion of normal uh, a situation that further perpetuates inequalities inequity injustice and rights violation mm, understanding these challenges that lies at the center of defining the uh, and achieving success in programming policy making and uh, unlike effective implementation when we talk about uh, gender and the women's rights especially when we talk about right to health it is it is so very uh, necessary to focus and understand the specific rights that need to be given as right to health to women and under the convention of an elimination of all forms of discrimination against women popularly known as sida it obligates states to take all appropriate measures to eliminate discrimination in the field of healthcare in order to ensure on the basis of equality between men and women state parties have further obligation to ensure to women appropriate services in connection with pregnancy confinement and the postnatal period granting free services wherever necessary as well as adequate nutrition during pregnancy and lactation when we talk about women's right to health and uh, a woman's right to the enjoyment standard of health that must be guaranteed throughout her lifetime equal to the raft men and women are affected by many of the same health conditions as men but women experience them differently due to both genetics and the social construction of gender the global efforts Uh, to end hiv epidemic have so far largely overlooked among the adolescent girls and many many more girls are suffering with the the kind of uh, disease and when we talk about the complexity of mere distribution of contraceptives that doesn't address the problem in in its uh, level now it is the product of the failure to invest in robust sexual and reproductive health rights to develop and sustain health services that are youth friendly guarantee confidentiality and non stigmatization treatment and offer comprehensive sexual sexuality education rather vaccination against the virus and appropriate advice in case of gender based violence must be extended and we all know like the early marriage and pregnancy is one of the most detrimental consequences is uh, of early marriage is pregnancy among you are very young girls that is a known health hazard to both mother and baby and uh, regarding mental mortality most of the world's maternal deaths in developing regions uh, are happening like excuse in, me uh, dr dilshad wind up wind up yes. 
Yes, 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 Professor. So, in, in conclusion, I would like to say that the struggle to advance global governance without global solidarity will continue to undermine uh, efforts to address a wide range of global health challenges with these uh, health and human rights harms disproportionately threatening our globe and the structural limitations in global governance reflect the neglect of global obligations, extraterritorial obligations of a global character, which require joint and separate actions through international cooperation to realize human rights universally and the global obligations, the least elucidated and most unfulfilled type of extraterritorial human rights obligations can serve to underpin global governance with solidarity, empower marginalized individuals and groups, reduce health inequalities across nations and promote global health with justice. And also definitely it will restore health for women globally. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yes, uh, now that she has uh, Dilshad uh, Sheikh, uh, she is uh, principal of the Satyabhama Science and Technology School of Law, and she has delivered from the A to Z aspect of it from the birth to the death of the baby and the mother, and she covered the globally, they made it. But I'm thinking to call the Arun, but Arun is still stating his thing. Uh, meanwhile, I could see, Arun, are you ready? Arun, are you ready? I think he's in mute. Yes, please, Arun, you mute, uh, unmute it, then you speak. Yes, yes, can you hear me? Arun, you speak. Yes, sir, I'm speaking, can everyone hear me? Yes, yes, I could see you and I could yes. hear you and Arun is from the Villa College, Maldives. Arun, now you can start it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, just give me a second, let me share my screen. Okay, sir. Okay. Uh, uh, Yes, can hear I can I can drag you to you and you can be a host. Yeah. Okay. Yes, you can make it out. Yes, ladies yes, and sir. gentlemen, namaste. My name is okay, Dr. Arun. I'm from uh, uh, India. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, Salam alaikum. Or I'm from no, 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 no. Murtuja, you are not supposed okay. to speak now. You need not to supposed to speak yes. now. Okay. Such slides. No, this is not your slide. Is a villa college Maldives. Yes, governor. Continue, Arun. Yes, uh, Namaste, Salam Alaikum, and uh, welcome everyone. First of all, let me thank my good friend Hussein sir for organizing such a wonderful event, inviting me. I feel very much privileged to be here. So, today, my topic, which I have chosen, is emotional well being. As uh, we all know, sometimes we take health and uh, happiness as uh, confusing events. Physical health, when you talk about uh, health... Uh, be but, close but to the health. gadget. Be close to the gadget. All right. Yes. Can you hear me, sir? Yes. All right. Health and happiness are basically confusing when people particularly talk about how is your health. People talk about physical health, but people don't talk about mental health. In these uh, societies, it is very unfortunate to see that once uh, one person visiting hospital is taken as a patient, but one person who is visiting a psychotherapist or a psychiatrist is seen as a mental patient and they'll be looked down very poorly. That's one thing which I'm very much disappointed about. So we all want happiness and uh, most of the time we don't realize what is happiness and uh, most of the time it is mysterious. I have a dog called Burfi. Burfi passed away recently. I even engrossed his picture on my camera. I love my dog and he passed away recently. But uh, we say uh, in India, whatever takes life passes away. If that is the mental well-being, we can cope up with life. That will be really nice. And Aristotle, we know he's the a guru, he's the uh, master of Macedonian uh, prince uh, Alexander. When it comes to happiness, he says in his words, opinions differ, same person might define happiness as pleasure or money in good health and health, particularly when they talk about happiness and when they have money, they talk about health. When they have health, they'll talk about money. Uh, in Bhagavad Gita, there is a state called Sita Pragnata, which means uh, in the happiness or sorrow, when people don't change their condition, they're eligible for liberation. Particularly, this world is suffering from mental health. When we speak about, uh, according to a report by WHO, one in eight billion, in other words, one in every eight people suffer uh, mental health issues. 
this could be societal there are various reasons for mental health issues but uh, still uh, we can see south asian asian southeast asian we can see 73 percent is the happiness globally it is 88 percent and uh, american nations are at 94 and europe is at 95 and western provinces are at 93. so these are some of the statistics and particularly if we move further on to mental well-being so according to devora director of department of mental health mental health who say something like uh, most of the countries suffer mental health issues and societies tend to neglect them when societies tend to neglect mental health issues they don't suffer enough uh, help to them and similarly, when we talk about uh, there is no ultimate health, when people are not happy from the inside, they can't be happy from the outside as well. And similarly, when we talk about uh, emotional health, health uh, emotional well-being or emotional health, according to NHS uh, recent publication, ability to successfully handle life stress. Uh, the life without stress is unnecessary. Walk in a park is not a life. Walk in a Jurassic Park is a life. But uh, there is a Tyrosaurus Rex chasing you, but still, uh, how fast can you run and how efficient can you be and unfortunately the issue of maldives is uh, one in every five according to the world standard one in every eight but unfortunately over here one in every five suffer mental health issues these are various factors for risking emotional factors uh, risking emotional health such as genetics or uh, low education or even bullying or uh, job strain or job loss or unemployment or conflict or social economic gender equalities particularly when we talk about uh, anthropology or society how do they look at each and everyone what is the status of the society how people look at each other and particularly when people being from an ethnic minority when are they not treating when are not they being treated properly and uh, moreover we talk about uh, sexual abuse and even a uh, violence even poor quality infrastructure for example my predecessors were talking about uh, health issues particularly when we don't have a hospital in a city uh, it doesn't become a city when we don't have a hospital in a village the hosp the village is not meant to be lived over there similar injustice discrimination and particularly social exclusion there are various factors and particularly these days we are doing a research on uh, body dissatisfaction sns particularly social networking sites and then impact on emotional well-being one of my research which says that uh, uh, a respondent particularly responded to me that uh, if I don't get enough likes, I'll be under depressed. If I don't get enough comments, the love symbol on my Facebook is very important for me. Like is not enough for me. So this leads eventually to stress. Stress eventually leads to poor performance. Poor performance eventually leads to a poor results, poor job, poor life and stress. And particularly kids do compare with each other. When you talk about mental health particularly, it's an inherent part Collectively, we talk about mental health together as a health. Health is a component of physical and mental. Particularly when you talk about uh, mental health and institutive values. So when we talk about connecting, functioning, coping up with stress, and more importantly, we talk about surviving and thriving. So that's the aspect we teach in our classes. Survive and thrive. Survive and thrive. You have to survive. You have to thrive. You have to think. You have to feel. You have to act. You should not be in a mood of non decisive making you should be absolutely sure of what you're doing and take the result similarly we talk about protective measures similarly genetic factors could be one of the physical activities most important that's one thing we can highlight over here i'm a badminton player uh, i go for running i go for swimming similarly good family a good community and richness money helps but money is not everything is what one thing and uh, structural aspects as well such as economic security, good quality infrastructure. We, there need to be enough access, particularly, for example, the city which I live in is Mali. Mali has everything. Uh, we have uh, swimming, we have badminton, we have cricket, we have football, we have volleyball, we have basketball, we have tennis, we have caroms. We technically have everything. The beautiful beach, people just hang out at beaches, etc., etc. So social and gender equality, particularly this my area of research, uh, I have my doctorate in gender equality when you talk about men and women should have equal rights at organization, particularly in my research at workplace, workplace gender equality. These days I'm doing a research on workplace incivility, what happens when men and women. Previously I did a research on sexist remarks on workplace. So particularly gender inequality is prevalent in this world because of perhaps uh, how uh, the education system is or the culture is, the society is. I have seen many cases in my country and over here as well when women are not given equal rights in justice. I was utterly disappointed with that as well. So finally, in last my 13 seconds, uh, protective measures when you talk about building resilience, uh, reducing stress. Without stress, there is no life and uh, without stress, there is no life. No life, no stress, no life, no stress. Similarly, sleep is very important. 
that finishes my time, but still just a few more seconds. Getting good quality sleep and being mindful. Uh, this is a moment we have to live in. Yesterday is a lesson. Tomorrow is a suspense. Today is what we have. Similarly, coping up with loss. My biggest loss in my life uh, so far, if I see, I lost my grandmother and I lost Burfi. Burfi is my dog again. So these are heart-wrenching moments. But again, as I said, whatever comes into this world should leave. So I have to live up with that. Uh, similarly, we talk about strengthening social connections. Uh, when we don't have a shoulder to cry on and when we don't have friends to call upon, when we don't have family, when we don't have friends, it is very unfortunate life. And concluding, uh, Daniel Goldsman book we have come across, uh, Savoman and Mayer also concluded their research, that core components of emotional intelligence. But it is another area of my research. I guide my students on uh, these five core competencies. When someone does emotional intelligence, I pick them. And it starts with empathy. If empathy takes place, this world doesn't have a war. Colonization would have never taken place. And mental disturbances would have never come. In India, we believe uh, Ardhanarishwar, Shiva has given half of his body, one part is husband, one part is wife. If husband does something, it affects wife, wife does something, husband gets affected. My wife calls me very badly when I eat a chocolate. Arun, don't eat chocolate when you get old, I'm the one who is supposed to take care of you, don't do such kind of nonsense. Similarly, social skills, self-awareness, self-regulation, and motivation, these are some of the core competencies. These are areas of research which I teach to my students and I guide in their uh, projects. Okay, so, thank you very much, Dr. Aram. In a short while that we thought my caution that you concluded it, as you said, uh, because your area is having the lot of the beaches, so a good a good exercise is swimming. Mm -hmm. So with that, yes. I would like to, because the madam Madhumita Dar Sarkar is uh, waiting, I believe, I don't know whether you are, are you madam? Professor Madhumita Dar Sarkar, are you ready? Sir, one second, I'll just ask my son to upload the because I am not very much, uh, you know, conversant with uploading the videos. I think so, I can, uh, but I'll just call him. I can drag you to you. Oh, can you drag it to me? Drag the my ball to the Madhumita Dhar Sarkar. All right, just give me a second. Yeah, you can drag it. I'm trying to... Is my presentation still visible? Yeah, it is a vis uh, yeah, visible. Thank you for your time. It is a visible. All right. Just a second. Just a yeah, second. Yeah, you can uh, make it out and uh, you can drag uh, to the Madhumita Dhar right. Sarkar. Done. MS. Or should right, make it I... out? Even I, I can also drag it. So wait for a second. I'll just... Uh, so can you just uh, i'll have to upload my uh, screen isn't it share my screen no 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 directly we can you can you can make it out because i yeah. i drag it to you can you just put it up then because you, I, you can I use your own sir one you can directly i shared you you can use it where is it i shared you you can use it how do I use? So just, yeah. No, this is, whose is it? I can't see. You cannot see. Start, yeah, I'll put start. Right. Is it that? Is it mine? No, no, no. It is not there. It is not yours. Not there. Because okay. uh, there is a so facility, just... there is a facility is available and where yeah. we can directly yeah, that is why I gave you the PPT. I thought you'd be uh, no, this is mine. Can I I can put a click? Arun, you, you came out of it. Yes, sir. I came out of it long time. I can see Miss uh, uh, Madhumita. Where is your file? Yeah, exactly. that's why I'm asking I'm her. I'm also Madhumita. trying to see. I'm also trying to find out where is my file. Okay, you yeah. know one thing. Open it's a PPT file, I believe. Open any yeah. PPT, and from there you can see. Uh, the recently opened file from that uh, you can or if you have mailed a professor you can find it on your uh, google drive or gmail particularly download from the no, gmail no, no, because uh, easiest, easiest choice yeah, because I, uh, madam your your file first name is uh, health i think so elderly health right to health of elderly first person. i asked the first yes, name you know, you know, my first name is madhumita madam title of your work uh, 
Which one is it? Title of your work first. Yeah, right. Right to health of elderly. Yes, person. yes, it, it already came. Right yeah, now I can I can show you. Yeah, 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 now there, I can. There, see. There, right? I've seen. Yeah, yeah you can see it now. Continue it, madam. Yeah, now I can see. Yes, yes. Okay. A uh, very good evening to all. Am I audible? Yes, yes both. Yes. Both. Yes. Okay. Uh, welcome, professors. It's a momentous occasion that I have uh, been uh, given a opportunity to put forth my ideas and uh, actually we are here to celebrate right to uh, like health for all so i would be sir i would be can i just uh, start doing that by, at my own because you can you can no, no, you so, cannot do now because i took it the charge okay okay it's all right so first of all let us basically start with who is an elderly person the who defines an elderly person as someone who has attained the age of 60 years the definition, however, has not been adopted as a norm because the UN member state disagreement about how to determine a person's seniority based on age. According okay, to jump, Section jump 2 H of jump, Maintenance... Jump. There are many are there. Jump to it. Okay. So uh, let us uh, skip the legal provisions. As we know, in the Constitution of India, we have Article 21, Article 38.1, 39C and Article 41 which uh, gives talks about the legal perspective of the elderly person as you all know that crpc 125 is the section which gives maintain the provisions for maintenance of elderly person this was important because i thought that senior citizens there should be some laws protecting them as i am from law i thought that let me give some backdrop on it uh, so chapter 2 of the constitution which corresponds to directive principles uh, of state policy and from there, we have certain uh, kind of policies which have been framed for older person. That is the National Policy for Older Person 1999. And we also have personal laws where the elderly persons uh, have provisions for support of parents under Hindu personal law. And not only that, Christian, Muslim, and even Parsi laws. We have the similar provisions for even Islamic laws. There are the income tax uh, provisions where India allows senior citizens to request a tax discount, uh, maintenance of and welfare of parents and senior citizens acts of 20, 2007 also is the act which uh, requires an heir or offsprings to give his or her parent a monthly payment as maintenance. The act, sir, if you keep on going so fast, I think I had recorded my thing. I was trying to upload. It was taking 48 minutes. Just give a bit of pause because otherwise nobody will understand. <laughs> Madam okay. Jia, that's why so I told you, us... make only the nine slides, not more than that. No, no, it's but all anyway. right. I'll tell you, sir, I will I know how to because I've already framed it within seven minutes with this PPT. I'll tell where, uh, this one you could just skip. Not this, sir. No need to go back. Uh, go ahead. It's all right. So let us go to the next part. Yeah, health ailments among elderly persons. We have, uh, the, as we all know, know, that there is a lot of degenerative diseases of heart, blood vessel, diseases of locomotory system like osteoarthritis, Parkinson's diseases, respiratory illness, problems of genital urinary system, uh, failure of special senses like hearing, visual disability, age-related cognitive decline such as dementia, depression, anxiety, and other kinds of mental illness, etc., are predominant in old age. The incident of mental illness is high and more broadly, this also you have gone to international framework. Okay, whatever it is, I can just explain with my own language. Uh, it's better you keep it sir, there only. Uh, so, because I was just talking about, you know, that well-being means both physical and mental health. Until and unless we are both mentally and physically fit, we are not a complete, we don't have a complete wellness, as our earlier speaker has said. So uh, coming to these things, so I have, I'm telling that it is not only that the physical stamina and other things are lost, the incident, incidence of mental illness is high among elderly, because with growing age, elderly persons experience not only various anatomical and physiological changes, which lead to the loss of strength and stamina, but also psychological changes owing to the frustration of growing old and difficulty in coping with the unexpected changes as we start growing old. Next slide, sir. Now, coming to the international framework, poor health in old age has broad legal and social implication. It disproportionately affects an elderly person's ability to enjoy human rights, especially the economic, social and cultural rights. A human rights-based approach, therefore, is needed. 
and the states need to respond progressively by engaging into multi-sectoral actions to make better the lives of the elderly person. So you can go to the next slide. So let us see what are the steps which are to be taken. There are four steps which are to be taken. And as you have seen, these four steps are, uh, we see that it is uh, accessibility, availability, acceptability, and quality. So coming to the availability of the rights of health of elderly person, in this context of aging, availability refers to the sufficient quantity of healthcare facilities, good services, as well as programs to meet the healthcare needs of older people and the availability of essential medicines. So efforts to move towards universal coverage of needed assistive devices and essential medicines have great potential to improve older people's health and independence. Many low-cost solutions such as eyeglasses, hearing aids, etc. help in uh, giving better life to the elderly people. Now, next slide, sir. It's all right. Accessibility to right to health of elderly persons. We are coming to the accessibility. You, we know that there is a symbiotic relationship between good health and financial security. Until and unless the elderly person has a financial security, he cannot good, go for a good health services. So in absence of government-funded universal health care facilities or coverages or subsidized health care facilities and aged care system of elderly person who are financially constrained often have to choose between basic because those who are having financially are not sound they have to first either go for the basic needs like food shelter and then they can go for the opt of health care so there are such problems with the developing nations as i've already said earlier besides that long term care however necessary is also necessary and and then of course not only that an appropriate uh, like we have to, when we talked about the quality and the right of health of elderly persons we see that the provision of quality care is hindered by we, when we don't have properly skilled people who would be taking care of the elderly person so what is needed is there, there is mainly in this underdeveloped or the uh, countries which are not that developed and or developing they lack adequate training to care take care for older people particularly when considering the chronic nature of some conditions or diseases. And thus, the, like we can say that these people who are the health providers are not properly prepared for taking up the caregiving roles. So we need to ensure that and streamline this effective care system for the elderly person, which is the need of the art. An appropriate mix of speciali specialists such as, as geriatricians, a well-age friendly as well as age-friendly, adequately skilled, competent, and empathetic health workers. Like we had earlier said that the speaker, earlier speaker also had stressed on the empathy. So whenever we talk about healthcare, we always know that there should be some kind of empathy. And the people who are the caregivers, if they are not empathetical to these elderly, to the elderly persons, would not actually, you know, uh, have that uh, kind of, you know, uh, care which is needed for the elderly, that will not be given to them. So the plan of action on health of the elderly people should therefore focus on the need of training of both formal and informal caregivers in meeting the health needs of elderly people. So, and not only that, the earth of available data yeah, in relation to the conclusion, to madam. Yes, sir, I am coming. It is, I think so. You also did not give me seven minutes, sir. Yes, see no, no, already is. covered. You are uh, presenting. <laughs> no, sir. Present. It is all right, but sir, it was not seven minutes. You kept on skipping, whatever it is. So, uh, what is finally the conclusion is government should adhere to a policy of non discrimination and should offer resistance to ageist assumptions as. The, it, is, it acts as a stigma or stereotype attached to aging can serve as a barrier to both accessing and receiving quality care. Moreover, a coordinated response, like uh, a coordinated response is necessary to create and maintain age-friendly environment, including housing, employment, financial security, transportation, and social protection, as we all know, that's needed. Since until and unless it is in the complete, uh, you know, you have a complete kind of access, you cannot already uh, actually afford for a good quality health. 
so we know that there are thousands of destitutes and disadvantaged elders who do not even have access to two square meals we need to have more uh, policies framed to help improve the quality of life of the needy elders by providing basic sustenance so that they can lead active and healthy lives through monthly ration and through the facilities which are imparted by the government thank you time management is the important factor in the so how did you manage time a bit informally i'm asking how much time did i, I have the time here when you started when you are coming to the point Eh? Okay. Because uh, here my watch runs here, my in the computer. Actually, sir, the main thing is that I made uh, this entire thing. You had asked. In the beginning, I told you, madam, you reduced to the seven, but you said I skip it. But instead of wasting the time now, and uh, now the who is ready, be okay, ready. Okay, sir, it's all right. Take the next person. Thank you, everyone. I Thank have a question. Yes, yes, Can I ask a question? Yes, yes, sir. Uh, who will be the next? Yes, sir. Yes. Sir, just give me one opportunity. I would like to ask a question to Doctor. Uh, Professor Madhumita, so Madhumita ji, it's a very varied uh, presentation. I'm really pleased with it. But my some simple questions are: uh, uh, What is the background of this data? Where do you have the statistics? Government of India, for example, I believe you are from India. Government yes. of India is giving rations. There are government hospitals. I'll agree that uh, there are no enough uh, facilities over there. I yes, sir. I'm with... not. I'm not countering that. Facilities are enough, mm -hmm. but. I am talking about the empathy of the caregivers because I have data. I have data, and I have said that the Helpage India data is there, and uh, various authentic data have been taken. And actually, one of my uh, scholars has she has done a research on elderly person. So mm -hmm. she has interviewed, and uh, we have in the southern part of Assam. Then one of my another scholar she is doing for West Bengal. So in that way, it is not only that there was an imperative study also done. Uh, mm -hmm. so everything is there so what we felt this was the findings which was there mm -hmm. by both of them and i wanted to share and right. besides yes. Uh, mm -hmm. yes anything else sir ah yes so you would like to formalize the proper education system i believe uh, if that yes. was your conclusion yes yes ah okay actually that was, like that was... there there should be a proper coordination actually first of all you know we have a lot of rural areas mm -hmm. so we have primary health care centers mm -hmm. where you know actually it is a fact you go to the primary health in the rural areas because i am in a you can say in a very remote place mm -hmm. this is assam and mm -hmm. silchar is one of the remotest place you know where if I, if you go to the primary health care uh, centers there are nurses there are people but what i felt there is everything but the empathy for the old age people you don't find you know they are neither like earlier like we had a lot of respect for the elderly person but which we are seeing gradually we are also finding that elderly abuse we cannot could not imagine earlier but mm -hmm. now we have laws we have even our state is talking giving helpline for the elderly person mm -hmm. because there is a lot of melancholy experienced by them Mm -hmm. they don't have people we are we were also i could not say many things like about the time bank thing i could mm -hmm. have included that you know like uh, when uh, we go and give some time to the elderly person in return we have so switzerland has that and all mm -hmm. Act, that would have prolonged a lot so i could not touch many as question was uh, now uh, professor it... madhumita is very happy because she has given the answer and has taken the more than 10 minutes now <laughs> yeah, no questions now because I will give the chance Thank to the you, people those who are at the last session how much they want to sit with me. Let them sit with me. I am also my turn also comes over there. Now let us see that. I believe that this person is there from the Nigeria and uh, Bana Murtala Haruna Bana Allah. Are you there? If you are there. Do you know how to operate your own? Yes, yes, sir. Yes. Do you know how to yes, operate your own PPT or shall I operate? Yes, yes sir. What is sir? <laughs> shall I operate or you I operate? operate. Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> okay, doesn't matter. Uh, the first name of your PPT is 75 years. So, I mute the microphone. Seventy-five. Is it your PPT? What 
What is your name of your PPT? Yes, this is your PPT. Sir? Go ahead. Go ahead. Right. Okay. Sir. Okay. Uh, good, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. Uh, the presentation is in two parts. That is the milestone of the WHO and also the planetary health in the age of the pandemics. Yes, go to the next slide. Right? Next. Since the launch it, uh, okay. Uh, since the establishment of WHO in uh, 1948, uh, the first uh, issue of the uh, establishment of the first international health regulations in 1969, and also briefly, I'm going to watch so that briefly we pick some few landmarks areas of the achievement of WHO. 1978, uh, the launch of the Health for All by the year 2000. Uh, 1983, HIV was discovered, uh, which causes uh, AIDS. Then 2005, the review of the International Health Regulations. In 2009, HN1 influenza uh, epidemic was uh, uh, afflicted uh, the world. Then in 2020, the global outbreak of novel coronavirus set off. Then in 2022, there was an agreement by WHO and member countries that uh, uh, human, animal, and plant cells should be and the ecological uh, and environment should be. Up. Next, next slide, sir. Go to the next. Okay. So the agreement for cooperation on the health of humans, animal, plants, and the environment in 2022. This leads to the uh, planetary health and the planetary health and the development of destined uh, as twin, which is a digital platform for forecasting weather. And all. The next last slide, sir. Few last slides. Yes, next, next, next. Next slide. Next, next. That's slide number 14, sir. Number 14. Because I did not see the slide numbers here. When I roll it also because it's a PDF. This is uh, our trip of Ebola in West Africa. Uh, next slide. Well, this is the achievement of goal of non negative Next. Next slide, sir. Next, next, yeah, yes, sir. Okay, it's okay, sir. The thing is there. So, oh. it's, not visible. It's, like, it's okay, sir. You did it right. Huh? This planetary, okay, the planetary has uh, an edge of pandemic. That currently now the world is facing a threat of coronavirus from many aspects of uh, uh, globally. So. The WHO member countries decided to launch the okay, okay, it's okay, sir. The European Commission launched the Destiny E, which is Destiny S in 2021, in the context of Green Deal and Digital Strategy. This was aimed at uh, uh, monitoring the global uh, focus for weather, climate changes, uh, the ocean movement. So you can uh, try to wind it up because uh, it is in topsy-turvy. Yeah. The letters are topsy-turvy. Go back. Go back. Sir, go back. It cannot be visible. Go back. Oh, it is not visible, anything. No, up, go up, up, up again. You, okay, you can go extempore, huh? you can uh, daily extempore, the, you can two or three minutes, you can wind up. It's not okay. Sir, the COVID-19 pandemic is the most important public health crisis in recent history. An important characteristic of the COVID-19 pandemic was the early and widespread use of digital health technologies, such as telemedicine platforms, contact tracing apps, 
wearable genome sequencing, artificial intelligence, machine learning, genome data sharing platforms, data dashboard, real time or real world data from mobile services, electronic health records, disease and vaccination registries, e prescriptions, and internal of internet of things. These developments in part, these developments build on earlier efforts to incorporate digital technology in public health. Digital health technologies and extensive use of data have been incorporated into several layers of the health system. Implementation of public health measures for containment and mitigation, planning and tracking of severe acute respiratory syndrome, coronavirus uh, variants, clinical management, and political and administrative uh, uh, decisions. The implementation of digital health technologies in different form uh, uh, from one country to another leads to the uh, uh, containment of this uh, coronavirus uh, pandemic globally. Digital transformation is impacting every facet of science and society. Not because of, not because there is a growing need for digital services and products, but because of the present situation of the global pandemic of uh, COVID-19 variants that is affecting uh, the population. Is it wrong, uh, uh, The last part of the presentation uh, that I look at, that is the utilization of planetary health in the age of the pandemic. Now that we are in this uh, various uh, variants of COVID-19, uh, the use of these technologies, sir, the use of these technologies to Close to the gadget. The sound is less. Close to the gadget. And it's advocated for all countries in the world to utilize the digital technology so that future focus of pandemics can be detected early. Yes, Professor. Yeah, once again, welcome back to my third session, which is in progress now, because the second session which has taken, the computer should have to record in the hard disk. Otherwise, all efforts of our become futile. That's why we have to wait it till it will be recorded in the hard disk. Then only I can open the this thing. Otherwise, there would be a problem. Yes, now, because uh, Bhavana has already dealt it, uh, and uh, now the Rajendra G. Nail is there, okay. And the Pankaj, or the Madam would like to share something. Professor Madhumita, Madam, do you like to share something? No, sir. I think so. I have to put it mute. Okay, okay. <laughs> now, because uh, it's, I did not see the other people. Uh, yeah, because uh, I don't think they, they may join it. Uh, just before I saw the somebody else. Okay, let me. Sir, let you me can start, own. sir. Yes, madam. I was saying you can start your presentation. Yes, yes. My presentation is anchoring only, mostly. And here, what I want to say, extempore, I will give that point. Health is primary thing. As you said, it is there in the Article 21 also, it is made it our clear. It is not only a fundamental right, it is a inalienable right, that is a human right, according to the international instruments are concerned. That is number one. Your health is not good, you cannot concentrate on anything. Even though you have a lot of money, your interest will go away. And the health aspect of it is also the mind setup is very important point of view in the health, especially the diseases are concerned. When you feel that if you go to a particular doctor and your disease will be cured, better you go to the doctor only. Don't go to the FRCS and having the more than MD and so and so thing. Mental setup is a half cure, what I want to say. And the most of the people of the pandemic died in India, not because of the immunities they don't have, because of the fear. I will give you a small example to you. And, I, I, and of course, being a professor, you know that hang to death is a capital punishment. And why only hang to death? Why not the other thing? Like shooting, make a snake bite. Or 
throw in the fire or sit on the electric chair where the life will be taken out then the psychologist and the scientist they made the less pain a person will get only when will be on the gallows and that is hang to death now one person asked him of course the life sentence was given to him how do you want to be kill you and he said sir i don't want hang to death i want let the snake will bite me a black cobra will bite me it is enough so what they did it and you know that when a snake will bite two points are there two points two fang that you say fang if you ng fangs there are two fangs it will make that just strike it so he blindfolded and the two and the snake they made it, they made the bite and there there is a two patches are there and after some time consequently he died and the person who made it there is no snake at all he take the two pins and he put like this and naturally he thought that the fangs have bit him and the snake is there but he died and the for snake they were sent to the post mortem to say that how his death is there and really the death is because of the toxic poison but how come he made a two pins to strike to him and there is no bite of the snake but how he died his mental framework is in such a way in every human being there are some toxic substances are there which is scattered in very other places but the such a toxic substances are gathered together and accumulated and that made him because he mental set is that the snake has bitten me hence i died and really he died all the toxic substances will be accumulated at one place and consequently that leads to him to death so what i want to convey you are here is mental setup is very important factor and that is a very nice thing what should have to make it out and the cure medicine is the half cure and your psychological feeling or mental set setup is a half cure that's all what i want to convey it another point is there health need not to take one should have take a what i say ground nuts no like almonds instead of taking almonds you can take the ground nuts having the same caloric value and uh, not necessarily that uh, want to have a good health a good nutrition should be there not necessarily even even a small quantity of the vegetables having the a good nutrition of course in additional thing that we have to make it out that means a balanced diet is very much important factor if any dimension will be hurt then the it will have the impact on the other dimensions and i posted eight dimensions like uh, ritual mental physical and which i shown over there any any one of the dimension will be disturbed then the child will be disturbed and that is the reason our arun also say a good sleep also very much important factor if you don't have a good sleep naturally your brain will not function well a body needs the help a, a, a particular time of the factor they relax themselves including the mind i don't know whether mind will sleep or not <laughs> but body will definitely will sleep so health is a, a component which is must for each and every one and one should have to keep it and the, that is the reason that uh, it is the constitution provisions are there international instruments are there and to make the stability and the public health uh, there is an organization is a, which is a special organ is called who is made over there to take care of it but uh, people made the criticism in the pandemic and uh, to certain extent it is may be true also and most of the people those who are taken the two doses they are having the negative aspect of it i saw a living example also a side effects would be affect there to those those who are having a much doesn't have that much immunity power so if any drug would be made used over there first it will be experimented on the rodents rats and the animals later on the 
If any other no side effects would be there, then it should be administered to the human being. And the WHO or such a thing would be there which has given the green signal to the medicine doesn't have the other side effects. But I don't think that uh, there, I'm sure that there may be something fishy would be there and uh, the thing is happened. I don't know because in this respect, uh, I would like to see because I can say some more things, but I would like to give the chance to the participants because the 18 participants would be there because of the time factor. Most of them, they did not turn up, it seems. And another thing that would like the Pankaj, and now Pankaj is very much restless to speak. Yes, I can give the Pankaj to speak because he is very much restless. Arun, you can give the answer to the Pankaj because he is saying about the suicidal. Yes, please. I can, I can, I can. Continue, Pankaj. Please, Mr. Pankaj, proceed. What is your question? Mute. Unmute. Unmute. We could not hear you. Okay, yes. please pardon. Okay. Yes, now you can ask. Yes. Because you have a lot of questions. Definitely, I have noted down some few five points based on our discussion so far. Louder, um, please, Pankaj. I can't hear you clearly. Louder, please. Okay, I have noted down few points, uh, uh, five points I have assured you in your WhatsApp also, sir, uh, the five uh, points. So I want to mention these five points is with respect to suicidal cases, which is increasing. That is due to disproportionate use of drugs by youth, boys, as well as girls. Both are in the same environment uh, when they um, uh, are together and then the, there are a problem with boys as well as girls also do the same thing so first point is ratio of doctors nurses help boys help girls in the hospital as well as counselors at schools colleges uh, at home should uh, have early approach to reach education before accident happens um, uh, I think uh, everybody have understood this. The ratio is one, we need to increase number of nurses, boys and girls, as well as counselors, where youth should be taught with enough positive things that they do not hurt themselves. Physical health, mental health, as well as spiritual health. These three things together works with human psychology. And then uh, one person is capable to stand on their wills and then uh, the life is extended. Number two, rejuvenating by creating positive moments. Like we have to rejuvenate um, um, uh, these meditation yoga. These are small, uh, just examples. But uh, the real rejuvenation is when person's mind is working. Let the people will give uh, answer to your first question. Then you can ask the second question. No, I think uh, sir, Mr. Pankaj has given a statement. There is no question in that. Uh, he is giving the question. He is giving the explanation. No, no, no. He is okay. giving his opinion. It is a Your statement. Is opinion, is okay. Pass, uh, okay, continue. No continue. continue. Okay. The third Mr. point Pankaj, is... Do you have any questions? Because you have yes. already presented. Is there a question, question you would like I... to ask? What I is the question? Do you want to reduce the suicidal cases? Is that the question? How to reduce suicidal cases? Yes. The, the question, the third point is reconciliation. Reconciliation is uh, maintaining the order of liquidity at home. Every boys and girls should uh, be mentally prepared that they should have enough liquidity for their needs, for affordability of their needs. The fourth point is youth empowerment for creating self and public mutual relationship in synchronization with their friends, nascent circle. Friend circle is increasing, your affordability is decreasing, you will lose, you will go to depression. This is my statement. So to get out of their uh, these kind of depressions youth should have enough counseling that they do not hurt themselves disproportionate use of drugs are creating a lot of havoc in the society in the public places people hide and uh, do the, the enjoyment that is the joy okay so the joy part, part should be controlled by counseling at schools colleges at homes. The fifth and most important point I have uh, noted down here by uh, uh, listening to uh, our madams who have uh, spoken so freely on women's and um, uh, because mothers have to be more open to their boys, children, sons and 
fathers have to be more open uh, with their girls and by this uh, uh, that means uh, parents are so busy with their working and um, creating money for their uh, children that they are so busy and they have a little communication with their children but if really the things are spoken about business about other things the the ideas will increase the things which are uh, learned at a school if it is shared with parents parallelly then the the scenario after uh, the education is completed the youth will um, come up as a different person in the society so which is i feel is missing regarding uh, 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 working with the extending life of older people yes we need to create service for older people our children should be uh, um, um, like uh, even if they are orphans and regardless of like keeping orphans apart those who have parents um, they should at least because all the money generated is for them itself and we need to do not sell out we need to conserve those uh, properties and uh, suppose there is one small square and uh, suppose say 100 square feet how many parts you want to divide it into brothers and sisters and uh, by inheritance to inheritance so let it be on the you are making all generic statements you are telling everything in general if you have a research which is says that parents are not treating their children properly in a particular area of a country, a particular region that will be more insightful. These are all generic statements. Parents should raise their children. That's totally fine. Elder care should be there. That's totally even, fine. Even so, I will so. say something here. Uh, Madam, I need let to have me finish. A Madam, for let me finish. Let me finish. Just a okay. second. Pankaji, whatever you have said is what we are teaching. My father taught me, my mother taught me, I'm a responsible citizen. There are some idiots in this world who are not behaving properly. These are all known fact. In Yang, Dharma's four padas, only one is going in Kaliyuk. These are all known facts. Okay, that's not the catch. The catch yeah, is if you want to talk about education, talk about education. Education should be better. Parenting should be better. Uh, for example, you said about uh, ratio between patients and doctors. Doctors are made by the choice of the students. If I want to study medicine, I'll study medicine. If I don't want to study medicine, I can't be pushed. If that is done, students are suiciding in engineering colleges and medical colleges. Yes, that's what I'm saying that the, the, the number of ratio of nurses and doctors are not and this is all my seen facts and I'm, I am not giving you the data, but these all are from the industry. This is all uh, experienced things and uh, I have facts. I cannot share you if you want to me to show you the photos. I can bring you from proofs. I have enough proofs. I can Google it. I, I have can said, it. and I have, I think Madam is listening still carefully. That means I am correct. And these things are facts which is happening. And we cannot that. I have Let something to say, say also. Because give me a chance to the Madam to say something. So the main thing is that what I say is that parents always want to share everything with their children. They are very precious to them. But you know that today the world is moving towards the virtual world more. Okay, we want to interact, but sometimes even children don't want to interact. This is also one side which you have to see. And like, uh, you cannot force somebody to interact. Then children are ambitious. You are saying that they should be, you know, access. Uh, only money cannot be the sole criteria of happiness. So there are so many things in today's world. So you have to take everything in consideration. That is what I wanted to say. Yes, uh, Anikar uh, speaker is very much ready. Now I saw him and Professor Dr. Anil Kumar Dikshit. And if you are ready, please, Anil Kumar Dikshit is a professor at the Uttaranchal uh, University, Dharadun, India. And switch over to the Professor Dr. Anil Kumar Dikshit. Please continue. It. Yes, I am ready. I am ready. Yes, you can open your video and audio. Mm. Video is also. If the problem with the video, okay, audio is enough. Yes, I could see both. <laughs> thank you, Patakji. Thank you, uh, Professor Mohammed Hussain Sahab. Uh, because I was I was busy in one of the event here in my university. A cultural event is being carrying on, and the Chief Minister of Uttarakhand. Mr. Puskar Singh Dhami was with me here. So I was late and I am sorry for each and every person. First of all, uh, I am very much thankful to Professor uh, Hussain Sahab for organizing this wonderful event as usual. 
of the world. Basically, this we should also give importance to this day that uh, here. Dikshit, we India can India stop your video. We can use only audio. Focus, sir. Yes. This is the 75th Amrit Mahotsav India is celebrating. And uh, when we say that India is celebrating the uh, 75th Amrit Mahotsav, and this is also the 75th year uh, of uh, World Health Organization also. And um, World Health, uh, this World Health Day, which is one of the uh, event which has been hosted by the uh, World Health Organization. When we talk about the, the the Constitution of India, health is directly related to Article 21. Article 21 of the Constitution of India, which says that, um, and when we make the the interpretation, right to dignity, and dignity involves right to health also. And when we talk about right to health, then it comes all the points of the environment. A reasonable good environment and this climate change when we talk about this pollution climate pollution environmental pollution air pollution water pollution so these are the things that as much as we will get aware and now environment is not the we cannot say that it is it can be calculated within the territory of any of the country health issues are when you see, we, we just, we have recovered from Corona this year. And again, in India, I am saying, Professor Hussain said that again, there are many cases from the last uh, two weeks, media is reporting that in India, the, the Corona virus has, has again. So when we say that, regarding to this, that when health issues are there. So this is a collective responsibility to whole of the government of the universe. Every state, every state, every nation should be serious with issues of the related to the health. And these kind of diseases, which creates a global impact, which destroys the economy, I know more than I, I know there are five of my friends who has lost their partner or their parents or their son. It is very sad to say that we are living in, in, in this kind of environment, whether this global Corona has emerged due to the negligent behavior. This is not the disease which has been came from the head or, or from the wealth. We are responsible. Our policies are also responsible for it. So when Article 21 of the Indian Constitution, we talk that it says about right to liberty. When we talk about liberty, that comes with, with dignity. And we talk about dignity, then it again is interpreted with right to health. And for right to health, the Constitution talks about the uh, directive principles. So these kind of principles should be made so that every person, the health of each and every person, malnutrition of the child, the newborn baby. So these are the, the things which not only the law can be, be very much think, but basically is the awareness of the people. We should also aware about the health. We have seen that maximum that when the person comes on the age of later 45 to 50, then he give more reluctant with his health because at that time many of the things are being deteriorated. The basic thing is that health should be recognized, health should be given privilege, not only at that age, from, from the beginning of the but So the law should be made, the awareness should be immunization. There are many, many diseases in India, which has been just like pulse polio program, we are this the the government of India succeeded for that, and two drops of polio is still continuing. We have uh, uh, eradicated uh, in a very large extent. Then, uh, with respect to the corona, India is the world largest country which has uh, vaccinated more than 80 million people of the 
nation, three vaccination. We have seen that there are many countries which were not able to sustain these kind of vaccination. Even developed countries have also uh, they have failed. So died one of them. So on this day, we should take an oath. We should take a collective oath that with the oath that we will think not only within any limit, but awareness should be given and all those NGOs and is responsible to make the pressure over the government so that government while making any of the policies, while making any of the policies, the health issues should be kept in the top priority. There are the conditions of the government hospitals. The condition of the government hospital is not as good. The people are bound to go for the private hospitals. The treatment is also very much high. The cost of treatment is very much high, not only India, but many of the developing countries also. The cost of the medicine, the cost of the surgery, there is a very, uh, when we talk about the position, when we say in India, there is a ratio of 50,000 with respect to the one doctor. In every doctor, there is a ratio of the 50,000 people. So if 50,000 people between one doctor is available, this means that the policies of the government is not working as required with the uh, consultation of the um, health of, of, of the citizens. So these are the few of the, the things. Then right. I say that right to health should be given a fundamental right. Right to health is not the fundamental right. The court has interpreted it. And by that article 21, even right to sleep. Because right to health, the sleep plays an important role with respect to health. In India, there are many cases where uh, it has been made mandatory that after 10 p.m., all the loudspeakers will not be allowed. You just see here also, there was a, a program, but at 9.45, the speakers were being rolled down. So these kind of laws should be made very strictly because if at night these loudspeaker and all those things, they will be used for any kind of the purpose, for DJ, for, for entertainment, DJ in marriages, after 10 p.m. or 10.30 p.m., it will disturb the sleeping nature of the person of that area. So by the law, not only by the law, but by the awareness also, we should be aware. We should make the people aware. This drug in India, you see the state of Punjab, one of the film came, Urta Punjab. Drug is also disturbing many of the families, the youth generation. Is, is getting uh, addiction of the of this drugs and the parents are the last to know whole of the, the circle gets knows that this this child has been clutched by drugs but the parents are not being known they are the last person to know that their son their daughter has become the drug addict and now they have no choice for that and they send to all these drug clinics and and all those things so these are the things that now is the time that we should speak in our home in a very fluent manner, in a very open manner. The children should be negotiated with a very open mind that what is good and what is bad. So these are the few of the things that we should take oath, that we should save our next generation from drugs, we should save our next generation from these kind of corona-like diseases which are being generated by the scientifically. And these are being done by the nations. All those uh, science and, and, and all those uh, scientific things which the, many of the government is using it as a weapon. We just see climate change. We just see how the temperature of the globe is been raising. Scientists say that in the coming years, we can even leave this wheat. 
इंडिया इज द लार्जेस्ट प्रोड्यूसर ऑफ मेज ओनली बिकॉज इन द कमिंग टाइम इफ द टेम्परेचर ऑफ दिस लैंड एक्सीड्स बाई वन डिग्री टेम्परेचर इट सेल्फ इट विल हार्म मैनी ऑफ द क्रॉप देर विल बी अस्कर्सली पोजिशन ऑफ फूड एंड फूड हाइजेनिक फूड दैट इज बीन डायरेक्टली रिलेटेड टू द हेल्थ ऑफ द पर्सन जान है जहान है अगर जान ही नहीं रहेगी तो फिर जहान किस काम का रहा दिस मोबाइल न्यू जनरेशन इज बीन वेरी मच इडेक्टेड विद रिस्पेक्ट टू द मोबाइल दिस इज ऑल्सो क्रिएटिंग अ मेंटल इलनेस द न्यू काइंड ऑफ मेंटल हेल्थ मेंटल हेल्थ ऑल्सो वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट बिकॉज वी वन ऑफ द स्कॉलर इज डूइंग पी एच डी अंडर मी एंड मोहम्मद साहब and yes, he is uh, working on the mental health issues of the uh, females which are been convicted are in jail they are been convicted for one year two year three year like that no there is no position in in our judicial system how to recognize those patients which who are mental ill there is no such any kind of the formula because the health mental health patient doesn't accept that he is mentally ill so these are the things that we should understand we should make research we should discuss and these discussions should be in a open forum i am very much thank you to you mohammed husain saab that you have chosen this day and work hard for organizing this international conference on this world health day i am very much th uh, thankful to pankaj pathak ji also and all the uh, speakers dr arun and uh, dr ajari sir who are and many others who are who are here for this uh, and we will get a, a lot things we will get many things from here and this conference will ultimately lay down the milestones so that in this area which recognizes the mental health awareness about the drugs these kind of scientifically made corona like uh, which can be say viruses these are the artificial viruses corona will never go away from our life so we should discuss in the open forum and again i am very much thank you thank you to each and every member of this conference thank you sir thank you Yes, thank you very much, uh, Professor Anil Kumar Dixit uh, from Uttaranchal University, Dehradun, India, and there is another speaker from the Thailand, Bangkok, uh, Bablu Kumar Dhar, PhD, Post Doctorate Associate Professor, Business Administration, and MUIC is a uh, Mohala Ethic University, Mahidol University, Mahidol University, Thailand. and he is editorial member and the springer nature helion polis on that is a journal and he sent me his uh, recording and now i will play his recording please be patient and hear his recording before i could uh, make his recording let me first uh, make myself whether i am sharing it or not yes now I think I'm sharing. Yes, just a minute. Yes, it is gone. Yes, it is. Yes, uh, share. It is there. Share, and now the sound should be there. Okay, then I should have to use this button. Then I have to use uh, this button to make the share. Yeah. Let me come to the point here. Yes. then control yes now it is opened yeah it's uh, slowly opening i i think you could see my screen is it say yes could you see my screen now Anyone can unmute and say yes. yes. Now it is still yes. Yes. buffering. It's buffering. It's there. It's buffering. 
Yes. In the YouTube, yeah. he recorded it and sent it. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Now it's okay. It's taking time. Respected professors around the world, ladies and gentlemen, today is the 7th of April, and we come together to celebrate the World Health Day. I'm good. The mute. Of health for all. This year's theme is powerful reminder that good health is a fundamental human right and that everyone should have access to quality healthcare services without any discrimination or exclusion. The United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, SDGs, aim to create a world where no one is left behind. And the third SDG focuses on ensuring healthy lives and promoting well-being for all at all ages. The goal is to ensure that everyone has access to affordable and equitable healthcare services, and this aligns with the theme of this year's World Health Day. However, we must acknowledge that we have a long way to go in achieving universal health coverage. There are still significant disparities in health outcomes between developed and developing countries, and many people around the world to healthcare services, those who have an access to the basic healthcare services. This is especially true in marginalized communities where access to healthcare is often limited or non-existent. Furthermore, health is closely linked to sustainability, climate change, pollution, and other environmental changes have significant impact on human health, especially in vulnerable communities. Addressing to these challenges require uh, coordinated efforts by stakeholders, all stakeholders, including government, the public sector, civil society, and individuals. We must work together to create a better world where everyone has access to affordable and quality healthcare services. We need to invest in healthcare infrastructure, healthcare workforce, and health education. We must also ensure that healthcare services are accessible or accessible in, to everyone, especially in remote and uh, marginalized communities. Additionally, we must address the sustainability challenges that reduce carbon emission and uh, pollution, uh, promote sustainability, sustainable agriculture, and protect our natural resources. By doing so, we can ensure that future generation can live in a healthy and sustainable world. In the conclusion, on this World Health Day, let us commit to the goal of health for all by working together and taking concrete actions, we can achieve universal health coverage and, and build a more sustainable and equitable world for everyone. Heartiest thanks to the organizers. Thank you all for your patience hearing. Yes, yeah, that is uh, today's uh, presentation of uh, our Bablu Kumar Dar, and uh, he's from Bangkok, Thailand, and he recorded it. 
Then another famous personality because he infected with the routine in environmental change or climatic change and he got infected and he could not able to attend but he recorded his speech and he sent to me through the email and now I would like to switch out to my email to find and his name is yes his name is Professor S.B. Sharma he is a Vice Chancellor of Millennium University Malawi and uh, he sent me the work uh, now I am going to open it uh, and uh, before because these are the people those who are present at time being the others uh, I did not see them and uh, then uh, if, uh, if they come over there within that stipulated time I can uh, ask them to give the chance to them to speak uh, yes this is the World Health Day Oh, where is that? Yes, B. Chahan, there is no attachment to this one. Spiritual mark, mental health, Arun Kumar's mental health, it is here. But he sent me through the, what I say, there is another system. Yeah, it is there now. Yeah, then let us see that whether I am sharing this file or not. Uh, request access you need access <coughs> what request access google drive request sent google drive then i have to share it first we'll get an email letting you to know if your request was uh, approved or not because uh, he did not know how to load in the youtube uh, that's why i told him to send in the email and he sent the email when you send the email the google drive will copy it from the google drive i have to draw it because he is also sent through the gmail and i am also with the gmail i believe that you are hearing me is it i believe that you are hearing me yes yes yes, yes sir even though you could not see me of course, I can can I, I can hear you, sir. We can see too. You can see too, also. Okay, well and good, and uh, yeah, it is uh, not opening in the yeah because it's supposed to come from the Google Drive, and I told you, you know, he's the Vice Chancellor of the Millennium University Malawi, and he is a well versed person and having a good personality, and he will deal it. I told him to send me the WhatsApp. But uh, he sent with a different system where I could not uh, change to the WhatsApp. Uh, but anyway, that uh, I will load it. I will try to load it uh, when I recording and video editing it uh, in my video. And now I could see that because uh, if anybody wants to say anything, I don't know the Pankaj would like to give his own opinions uh, rather than asking the questions uh, and I cannot give the answer to his questions uh, unless uh, but uh, before I could find out, out let me have my own turn also because uh, very few things that I would like to say here and uh, which are common to each and everybody but doesn't matter but uh, here the things are very much important uh, which I want to share with you. Always one should have to know is the prevention is better than cure. Am I right? Yes. And happiness is the highest form of health. If your mind is happy, if your body is happy, then that is the highest form of the health. You could make it out. A good laugh and a long sleep, as Arun said, sleep, are the best cures in the doctor's book. And the World Health Day today, control what goes inside your mind and body to be mentally and physically fit. That is cited by the Invajai. And our bodies are our gardens. And our wills are our gardeners. William Shakespeare, he said. And then take care of your body. It is the only the place you have to live in it. Jim Rohan said regarding the World Health Day quotation. And for many, money, for many, money is wealth. And for me, health is wealth. That is a common saying. Invajai also says regarding the health. Then health is the greatest gift, contentment, the greatest wealth, faithfulness, the best relationship that the Lord Buddha said. Again, we say that keeping your body healthy is an expression of gratitude to the whole cosmos, the trees, the clouds, everything. 
and this is a teach me hat hana is a happy heart uh, day quotation and health uh, the who is uh, the who constitution states i quote health is a state of complete physical mental and social well being and not merely the absence of disease or infirmity i am quote an important implication of this definition is that mental health is more than i repeat mental health is more than just the absence of the mental disorder or disability just now we made it happy health day and uh, that is 17th april 2023 exercise is a king Nutri- nutrition is a queen and put them together and you have got a kingdom and is said by jack lalenne and it is me professor dr mohammad saheb sen Professor of Law, School of Law, Saint Augustine University of Tanzania, Mwanzat, and Tanzania, East Africa. I believe that still our learned friend is waiting for his turn. I believe Pankaj. Over to the Pankaj. Now you can speak. Yes, sir. Three things are important in Five today's meeting. Five minutes are there. Okay, sir. I will speak. Uh, so, number one, inception. Number two. induction number 3 uh, implementation i cube so this i cube is very important inception is giving dreams to youth through a teacher okay what you are going to do the purpose is defined on papers in one sentence what is the vision so the vision should be clear to our modern youths regarding their subjects regarding their aim uh, in future and uh, the number 2 is uh, induction uh, the, the person who dreams should induct with same kind of circle to gain uh, something the kick start because if there is no start the dream is only on papers and uh, the people go to depressions so if induction is there probably uh, the uh, youth will um, walk in the uh, path of implementation and if things are implemented uh, there will be affordability there will be uh, fulfillment of needs and uh, con- um, this uh, contentment contentment can be attained and um, uh, regarding uh, 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 trying to wind up otherwise uh, cisco webex will wind you okay sir so the the basic thing is uh, we all should um, uh, be focused uh, with the, the, the three things um uh, and then um uh, yes uh, there is a problem with you more counseling is needed uh, and it is fact whatever i have said it is all fact we cannot show the records we have all government data and we interface every day and um, um, it pains um and it pains a lot when um, uh, though you are using something it's fine but uh, but it should be fulfilled if the, the same amount which is being used for drugs or other things is used for some business idea maybe the affordability uh, the affordability will increase yes, you can have to say the thanks to the madam <laughs> uh, madhumita madam still you are there i will appreciate your patience even ma yes. arun from maldives also present my another friend from indonesia yeah yeah he also be present then our dean lagos university from the nigeria i would appreciate your patience and patience pays a lot in kiswahili there is a methali proverb is there subira yavuta heri that means patience always wins but today or tomorrow pankaj back to you
sana na sikiliza mimi darasa online Mungu akubariki na kukulinda जहां से अच्छा हिंदू सता हमारा जय हिंद जय हिंद